Hey, it's Mr. Rogers here, and I hope that uh, you guys are doing well. And um, you know, we're we're understanding macromolecules, and we're doing a good job with them. And today, we're gonna go over lipids. And lipids are um, something that you guys are familiar with uh, as a different name, um, which is fats. But there's other kinds of lipids as well. And so, lipids is a big category. It's kind of a misfit category a little bit. We throw anything into lipids that is non-polar, meaning something that hates water. And so we're going to make sure that we write that on notes. So again, for this time being, I want you guys to listen and watch. And then we're going to get um, to the notes and actually write notes down in our uh, note sheet in a couple seconds here um, after I go through everything. And we'll make sure that we understand everything, hopefully. So first thing here, lipids. Um Examples, we'll go through examples. There's fats. So fats are an example of lipids. Oils, so things that you can think of like olive oil, vegetable oil, um, palm oil, coconut oil, things like that. Cholesterol. Cholesterol is a word that you guys have heard of before. Uh, probably more so on like medical shows or your parents or grandparents complaining, ah, my cholesterol is too high. Now, I will say this right now because I will forget, but cholesterol is actually one of the most important things in your body. And there is their cholesterol might be high, but never think cholesterol is a bad guy. You just don't want too much of it. Cholesterol acts almost as a glue in your body and it helps glue things together in your cell membranes on your cells. And without it, your cells would just leak. And that's not that's not what we want. Now, the problem is when you have too much cholesterol, because like I said, cholesterol is glue. And you can imagine if you have too much glue, your body puts it in your blood, it gets stuck in different spots in your vessels and that leads to problems, obviously, like heart attacks and strokes. So cholesterol is super important in your body. You never want to have zero cholesterol. That would be very, very bad. Uh, and then phospholipids, which sounds like a very complex word, and it kind of is, but what it's referring to is a phosphate connected to a lipid. And it says there, right there, it says it contains P, which is phosphorus, if you remember from schnapps, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, sulfur. Okay, so it contains that phosphorus. All right. Now, next thing, uh, the actual details here. So for the most part, besides phospholipids, um, we contain just the carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Um, so it has the same setup um, as carbohydrates, but we have a lot of carbons and hydrogens, a lot of carbons and hydrogens, very few oxygens. We're talking about uh, having like 50 carbons and six oxygens. So a lot of carbons and hydrogens, very few, very few oxygens. The main job of lipid is actually a storage of energy. Lipids are excellent use of energy and it's an excellent storage of them. Now we don't use lipids particularly because it's not the most efficient way of using energy, but it's an excellent way of storing it for when we actually do need it and we don't have enough carbohydrates. Um, so it's an excellent, excellent storage. Uh, the cell membrane, the, which surrounds every single cell, is made up of phospholipids. Uh, they look like little jellyfishes, and I'll, I'll draw one for you, and they look just like a little jellyfish. And that's important, actually, the fact that they look like one, and I'll explain why. Lipids are also used to regulate body responses and they control sexual development. So uh, especially in humans, our two main lipids that control our big parts of our body is if you're a guy, you have testosterone. If you're a girl, you have estrogen. And uh, the fact that um, these levels are different play a big part in your life. Um, you guys just got a big surge of these hormones during puberty. Um, and so things have changed. And so these are lipids and I'll show you how they're lipids and why uh, in a couple seconds. Again, at the bottom it says they're non-polar molecules. They don't dissolve in water. They hate water. They hate water, they hate water, they hate water. They want nothing to do with water. And that's important, especially for like the guy right above the hormones. We don't want to put a hormone into our blood and it just dissolve into little bits and pieces. Now we want it to stay intact so it can go to the cell it needs to go to and tell that cell what to do. And so the fact that they're not polar is super, super important. And then animals use lipids as insulation and cushion. And so you have a layer of fat all the way around your body. 
Um, it's designed that way. It helps you guys keep warm. And uh, you also have fats wrapped around all your major organs as cushions. If you did not have those, um, those lipids there, you can run into problems, especially if you fall and stuff like that. When people have very low fat content, if they fall on the ground, they hurt themselves more than, say, a normal person with the normal fat, fat content because you don't have that cushion around your organs. You, I mean, it, picture it as almost like soft little blankets wrapped around your heart and your stomach and your liver and everything. You want to keep those things safe. That's what's doing it. Okay. Kind of add a little bit more here. So fats are probably the more famous ones here. And you guys hear a lot of different kinds of fats that uh, exist out in the world. Um, there's three really big ones. We're going to talk about two in the notes, and the other one will be talked in the Pogel. Um, I'll talk a little bit about that one here too, but I don't have an example of it. But there's saturated fats, which come from animals. There's unsaturated fats, which come from plants. And then there's trans fats, which is human-made uh, in a lab. And we'll talk about why in a second. So saturated fats are... Fats that have a bunch of carbons, you can see only two oxygens, a bunch of carbons, so it follows the lipid rule, okay? And there's no double bonds, and there's the maximum amount of hydrogens that could possibly be here. So each carbon has their maximum amount of hydrogens that they could possibly have. It is called a saturated fat because it's saturated with hydrogens. These are only found in animals, and they are solid at room temperature. You know your fat is solid room temperature because if it wasn't, every time you walked, you would feel your fat sloshing around in you as a liquid. It's it's solid. And you guys have probably seen meat before. I'm hoping like steak or chicken or some other kind of piece of meat. You guys have seen fat on that meat. That's a saturated fat. Now, saturated fats are not the greatest for you, I'll be honest, but they're important to your diet. Um they're also really useful for uh, making cholesterol and things like that. So if you have a lot of saturated fat in your diet, you're going to have higher cholesterol because your body's going to make more cholesterol out of it. And so when people have high cholesterol, they kind of tell them to cut out the saturated fat. Ask your grandparents, your parents. that They've heard that from the doctor, I, I promise you. Okay. Unsaturated fat is liquid at room temperature and they come from plants if you think of every single cooking oil you've ever heard of except one which we'll talk about in a second they all have plant names on them vegetable oil olive oil coconut oil all these different kinds of oils because they come from plants and they're unsaturated because they don't have the maximum amount of hydrogens here they have double bonds here that take away some of the hydrogens and because of this, they have funny shapes and they're bent and they can't pack together so they stay as liquid, okay? Now, your body likes both these fats, but in your brain in the past, it was hard for uh, humans to catch animals. Like it's harder for me to catch a rabbit than it is to eat some berries I found in a bush. And that makes sense. And so your brain craves saturated fat. There is a part of you that craves the saturated fat. We found that out as scientists back in the 1950s. And the scientist that was working actually for um, a company that later became Yum, which is like the company that owns like PepsiCo and all these other companies. Okay. Um, they found out that if I take an unsaturated fat, which is cheap, comes from plants, and we put on extra hydrogens, we just shove in extra hydrogens into this guy, we can make something called a trans fat. And trans fat drive your brains crazy. It tastes so good, okay? So for like the 80s and 90s and early 2000s and even for the beginning of your guys' life, trans fats became part of just food. They were cheap to make. Humans loved them. They tasted really good. But the problem was they're not natural. and Your body doesn't know how to deal with them right, and they don't work well in your body and they create some messed up situations and they're very unhealthy for you without getting into much, too many details that we cover in like AP bio they're they're not good for you and so these trans fats are something that you'll learn about in the pogol but they're now being banned um california was the first one most companies have got rid of the trans fat because california is one of their biggest markets um so it's harder and harder to find trans fats but 
they for a while there were very very popular and they um they led to a lot of food addictions honestly was a lot of the trans fats and it's kind of interesting okay so saturated fats are solid at room temperature you can see the fats here you guys might have seen some fats when you're like grease from your tacos solidify down and stuff like that so you guys have seen that and then unsaturated fats are liquid at room temperature so they're actually a liquid um some are kind of in between i want to be honest with you we don't really like in 10th grade bio sometimes we get very black and white like you are this or you're that but there are some unsaturated fats that have some saturated fatness to them and there are some saturated fats that have some unsaturated fats to them one of the most famous saturated fats that leans more towards unsaturated the most is butter like if i leave butter out at room temperature you guys probably know that it gets soft right and if i put it on my skin it will actually melt completely it's pretty close to being an unsaturated fat and the other equivalent here is um things like coconut oil coconut oil can be solidified and even at like room temperature it, it's like halfway between a solid and a liquid um i said up here that i would tell about one that uh isn't a plant that's an unsaturated fat and that's fish oil fish oil because of their life in the water, they use fish oil in their liver to help with buoyancy. Um, one day, if you're ever talking to me and you really want to see it, or you only want to see it to yourself, there's a, there's a shark dissection video, and they'll show a liver of a, a shark. Livers are super important in fish because they help with the buoyancy, and they use this fish oil there. Now, your parents, again, probably heard of this, or you might have even heard of this before. We call these omega-3 oils. And so they're actually animal fats that come in oil form and they're really good for you um fish is one of the better meats to eat and that's why a lot of people that are very diet conscious they'll they'll be more vegetarian but they'll also be adding fish to their diet okay um so that's it for the the notes from there so let's let's draw on our piece of paper here so i'll pull this up and so i have lipids and so let's go through each single one here, okay? Let me actually pull this to the side. That way I make sure I don't forget anything because I don't want you guys to have less of an education because um, I forget things. So lipids right away, they're made up of C. It would be nice if it actually wrote C, H, and O. A lot of carbon and hydrogen very little oxygen that is smearing like crazy i'll find something to write with sooner or later here all right next thing we want to make sure we write Super important for lipids. They are nonpolar. They hate water. That seems very important. It is. I mean, that's basically what makes lipids lipids. Anything that's nonpolar, we kind of throw it into this pile of lipids here. Okay. So let's give some other examples. We have fats. And fats can be saturated. or unsaturated we're not gonna write trans fats on here we're fine saturated is animal or they come from animals or they're in animals either way you want to look at it and also they have max hydrogen so they don't have any double bonds they have as many hydrogens as possible unsaturated are plants and they have double bonds so they have less hydrogen so it makes them have bends and different things inside of their structure which makes them liquid okay so when i draw a saturated fat the, the saturated fat structure kind of looks like this it's 
this guy and it has three tails coming off and they're very straight an unsaturated fat structure it has three guys coming off and usually it has bends in it and because of these bends it's like packing for like a long trip it's easier to pack more things when you have no bends with less or with more bends uh, if you just throw clothes in you get less clothes these guys can't pack together, so they stay as a liquid. Okay. Uh, next, we have, um, well, let's see, cholesterol. It's very important. Two cells. I'm just going to put glue. It's like a glue. It kind of holds things together. Sorry, if you couldn't see that for a second. It holds things together. Um, another famous one that I didn't put down on the other thing, but it was kind of implied when I said testosterone and estrogen, is steroids are famous li lipids. Um, sometimes you hear them called sterols. I think even in your lipid pogo, they call them sterols instead of steroids. It's all the same. It's not a big deal. It's just nomenclature. Nomenclature means naming. <laughs> I should stop using those words. Um, and steroids, what's interesting about steroids is they're always four rings. And by that, I mean, when you look at a steroid, they're always four rings connected together. So four different rings. Those are probably the worst rings I've ever seen, but there's always four. Always four, always four, always four. All right. Got those. Awesome. Let's see what else we want to put. Oh, we need to put phospholipids. Now, phospholipids. They contain. Sorry, I spelled contain wrong. Contain phosphorus. And they look like little jellyfish. They look like this. And the head here is the phosphate, and the tails are the lipids. And these guys are used in cells as well. I'm going to put super very important for cells. If cholesterol is very important, phospholipids are super very important because cholesterol is gluing these jellyfish together. So there's no new need for glue if you don't have the things that they need to be glued together. Okay? So we can throw in some random uses here. I know we're starting to run out of space. So this is energy storage. It's probably the big use here. It uses energy storage. You could say messengers. Glue. And then I said we added uh, insulation and cushion. All right. Well, that's a lot on one piece of paper here. But let's kind of reflect back. So first, lipids are nonpolar. That's what makes them a lipid, is they hate water, they hate water, they hate water. And guess what, guys? They hate water. And they're made up of the same stuff carbohydrates are, but they're made up of almost all carbons and hydrogens. And we're talking very, 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 very little oxygen. Um, we have different kinds of lipids. We have fats, technically fats and oils. Fats are saturated. Um, unsaturated fats we call oils and nomenclature, basic life okay um saturated fats come from animals and they have the max amount of hydrogens they have single bonds only unsaturated fats come from plants they have double bonds and they have less hydrogens meaning that they have weird shaped legs saturated fats have regular legs unsaturated fats don't and so these guys form liquids because they can't pack together we also have cholesterol which are very important to cells they act as glue steroids this is the messengers in your cells and your body. And there's always four rings of steroids. 
I'm never going to test you guys on this in the biology class, but it's good to know. It's fun to know. Phospholipids, uh, they contain a phosphorus group, and they look like little jellyfish. Okay, They're super very important. We're going to talk a lot about them the next couple weeks. Uh, the head is a phosphate. The tails are lipids. And the uses for all lipids, we have energy storage, we have messengers, which are the steroids, we have the glue, which is the cholesterol. I didn't put the phospholipids being the cell membrane, but that's fine. And then insulation and cushion. So we've used lipids to help insulate and cushion animals. Um, and that's lipids. I mean, that's the gist of it. So we have lipids and at this point, carbohydrates. So our thing should start looking like this. As you can see, I kind of wrote them different ways, but that's fine. And uh, we're starting to get more and more and more in depth here. Okay, so we're going to have this little sheet. So I hope this is getting easier. Um, besides that, you know, thanks for watching, and uh, hopefully this made sense to you guys. Let's talk to you guys later.